All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. 500. We back, we back at it again. And today, we're gonna be working with one of my favorites right here. We're gonna be working with diagonals of squares. We're gonna be working with these diagonals of squares and we're gonna make sure that we know how to solve these problems, all right? So let's get it started, all right? So, first things first, we got ourselves this square right here. And the thing we know about squares, let's go ahead and make sure we do know about these squares, is that all the sides are equal. All the sides, are congruent all right so the first thing we can go ahead and see is that if this side is called a side that means this side is exactly the same that's what congruent means all right so we got our congruent sides and now we got to find something we got to find a diagonal uh oh that's not the side that ain't the perimeter that ain't the area but one thing that's beautiful about these squares is that there's a formula to find the diagonal Real easy. We're going to get the diagonal by getting our side and multiplying it by the square root of 2. So this bad boy right here is the side times the square root of 2. That's all it is. That's all it is. How can you remember the square root of 2? Well, square root. Think about squares. That helps you think about square root. And 2 because both dimensions, both base and height are congruent there are two dimensions that are exactly equal that's how you remember that square root of two so this is how we do this problem we're gonna have our side which is 5.111 okay we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by the square root of two and that's gonna give us the diagonal of the square that's what it is that's what it is all right so let me get my handy dandy calculator right here so we're gonna go ahead and put 5.111 hit enter we're gonna get two square root that and hit multiply and always 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 just so you can know the diagonal is a little bit bigger than the side in this case i got 7.23 times 10 to the zero power if you want to write it in standard notation we got 7.23 and that's it ladies and gentlemen that's it let's go ahead and get it started let's get it make sure we can do this all right Let's do the next one right here. All right, this one's a little different. We got ourselves the diagonal. And we remember from our previous problem, the diagonal is equal to the side times the square root of two, all right? But in this problem, we need to find the perimeter. And the perimeter here is gonna be the side times Four. Basically, we're going to get four and multiply it by the side. Why four? Because this side right here, this side right there, this side right there, and this side right there are all congruent. So we could do the side plus side plus side plus side or side times four. All right. Now, here's the deal. We don't have the side. We do have the diagonal. So what we need to do is we're going to have to rearrange the formula by dividing both sides, the left and right side. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other. We're going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. Look at what happens to my square roots of 2. They just canceled each other out. Because if you multiply by the square root of 2 and you divide by the square root of 2, they get canceled out. But now we got ourselves a new formula right here. We got ourselves the diagonal divided by the square root of 2 is equal to the side. So we're going to have to do this work here first. We're going to have to figure out the side first. And once you get that side in your calculator, you go ahead and multiply that by 4. So our first step, let me write it over here to the side. Let me write it, put it correctly substituted. We're going to do 35.7, right? And we're going to divide it by the square root of 2. So let's go ahead and put it in our calculator right here. So 35.7, we're going to hit enter. We're going to hit 2, square root it. You should see about 1.41. And then we connect those two by hitting divide. And now our side should be around, should be around. I'm going to hit yellow show. I'm going to hit yellow show. Now, look, I tell you, 
do not write these things down. You write these things down and you retype them, it ain't gonna work out. I would just leave it in the calculator. But so you can have an idea if you're on the right track, I got 25.24-ish, okay? There's still a little bit more after that. There's a lot more after that, okay? But that's one side, so we could get all those, and since this right here is the same as this one, is the same as that one, and is the same as that one, we could just get that 24.2, sorry, 25.2, and we could just hit four on our calculator. We hit four and hit multiply. Why four? Because yet again, a square has four congruent sides, all right? Sorry about that, that you looked a little funny right there. But four congruent sides. Four sides that are equal, all right? And so now we got our big awesome answer, 1.01 times 10 to the second. Or if you want to really go to that standard notation form, 101, 101, all right? How do you remember that? Well, check it out. 10 to the second power is 100. It's 100. That means 10 times 10. So that means that one in the front, that one in the front is gonna be in the hundreds place. And as you can see right here, it sure is. 101, and we got it right, all right? Let's go to our next problem here. All right, so this one doesn't have it drawn for us, but it's all right, it's all good. You can go ahead and do a little quick drawing. Now look, my diagonal might not be perfect. Oh my God, what is that? It looks like a curve, it looks like a quarter circle, man. I don't know. I don't know about that bad boy right there, but we could go ahead and try one more time. There you go. There you go. The diagonal. This diagonal is 6, 2, 7, 5. Man, you must be looking at me and saying, Mr. Delgado, you got some terrible handwriting right there. And you know what? I mean, I try to write it correctly, but you know, I'm not the best handwriter. I always had problems with my handwriting. But at the end of the day, this problem looks very similar. So... We could rearrange the formula again, or we could remember that if we got the diagonal and we're looking for the side, we get the diagonal and we divide it by the square root of 2, all right? So if you do that, you're going to be able to get that side. So in this problem, since my diagonal is 6, 2, 7, 5, or 6,275, we divide it by the square root of 2. And that's gonna give us our missing side. So that's our first step. So let's go ahead and bust out that calculator. Six, two, seven, five, we hit enter. Then to two square root, we hit divide. And what you should see is about 4.44 times 10 to the third. And I'm not gonna put an equal sign. I'm gonna put an approximation symbol because it's approximately 4.44 times 10 to the third. You write that, you get it wrong. Because it's not asking for the side, it's asking for that perimeter. So now we gotta get that 4.44 times 10 to the third, or about 4,000, you know, 4,440. And we're gonna put four in our calculator, and we hit multiply to connect it. And now we got our perimeter. Now this is gonna make sense. We got 1.77 times 10 to the fourth. Or if you wanna write in standard notation, well, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Where do you get that, Mr. Degas? Where do you get all those 10s from? Well, 10 to the 4th means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Notice we got ourselves how many 10s being multiplied? Four of them, all right? Because our exponent is 4. And if you do the work, if you do the work, we end up with 10,000, which means that 1 that's in the beginning of our scientific notation form should be in the 10,000s place value. So we got 17,700 is our standard form, all right? So let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. All right, we got another good problem right here. As you can see, we've been messing around with these. We're going to get our diagonal, and we're going to go ahead and divide it by the square root of 2. And guess what that's going to equal to? Our side. Yet again, the perimeter is equal to 4 times the side. Now notice, I'm going to start abbreviating here. It's not going to be writing side and diagonal all the time. But I hope you understand what the D and the S are going to be standing for, all right? Side and diagonal. And of course, the P in this problem is the what? What do you think it is? 
Well, right there is the perimeter. That's exactly what it is. So we're going to get our diagonal. It's going to be what? What's our diagonal in this problem? 2.7675. And we're going to divide that by the square root of 2. That's going to give us our side. So let's go ahead and do it. 2.7675. We hit enter. We're going to do 2 square root. Divide. And our side should be roughly 1.96 times 10 to the 0. Now here's the deal. Don't write it down because that's not the answer. We're looking for the perimeter. So we're going to hit 4 and we're going to hit multiply immediately. And that we write down. That's our answer. And we call it a day. 7.0, sorry, 7.8. Three, yeah, I made mistakes times 10 to the 0 or 7.83. That's what it is. All right. Easy work. OK, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Notice how they give us the diagonal here. I see the diagonal, but they ain't asking us for perimeter no more. I don't see no perimeter, but I do see something else. I see something else right here. I see this area thing right there. We got this area and we got to know the formula for area of a square. The beautiful thing is all sides are what? They congruent. That means we don't have to do base times height. We could do side to the second power because the sides are the same. So what we still need to do is get the diagonal. And we're going to go ahead and divide it by what? The square root of 2. You got it. So we're going to put it right there. So in this problem, we're going to go ahead and put... 54.6 for this particular square and divided by the square root of 2 and that's gonna give us a side So let's go ahead and do it. All right 54.6 enter 2 square root divide and we end up with a side of roughly 3.86 times 10 to the first remember we're not done yet the side formula we're going to go ahead and use this, what we wrote down, but don't write it down. It should still be on your calculator. I see my screen right here, and it's looking right at me. It's looking at me. It's saying, hi, Mr. Delgado. I see you right there. And hopefully you see 3.86 times 10 to the first on your calculator. But we ain't done. We're going to have to square it a couple ways. You can hit 2y the x. Or you could hit blue x squared on the 35s. If you got a different calculator, well, hopefully you know how to square it. But let's go ahead and square it. And now we got our area formula. And this is a good answer. 1.49 times 10 to the third. Or if you want to write it standard form, because you know me, standard form is sometimes a little faster. 1,490. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Okay, let's do another problem right here. We got our square. We got our square. Remember, we got our area right here. What's that area formula? The area formula is going to be side to the second power. Okay, that's what we got to do. That's what you got to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. So we're going to get our diagonal to find out the side, and we're going to divide it by the square root of 2 and that's gonna give us our side so let's go ahead and get it popping we're gonna get that 975 and divide it by the square root of 2 and let's see what we get 975 we hit enter 2 square root button hit divide to connect them and we should have roughly about 6.89 times 10 to the second now of course yet again I don't want you going over here and just writing it down and then retyping it. Don't do it. It should be looking right at you. We're going to go ahead and hit the squared button. We're going to square it. Now square root. We're going to square it. And now we got our area answer. Yeah, buddy. We're going to go ahead and write 4.75 times 10 to the fifth. Again, standard notation. If you want to remember the tricks, you write 4.75. And since there's two numbers behind our decimal here, I hope you see them. We got these two numbers. We got one. We got two. Well, we get that five. That's the exponent. We take away those two because we already wrote those two numbers down, and we end up with three. And that means we just write three zeros at the end. Sometimes these little tricks 
could help us think about this a little bit faster, okay? Really, that's the trick. Notice there's one at the top. I'll go back a little. Remember this three we had up here? Well, three minus the two spaces. Three minus two is one, which is that one zero written right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So sometimes you know these tricks, they may help you out, okay? Make you a little faster. But either way, they're both working for us. They both work for us. You know what I'm saying? So let's get it. Let's get it. All right, we got our next problem here. We got a beautiful problem right here. So we got ourselves our diagonal right here. We again need to find the area. I like these problems. They may seem intense. They may seem difficult, but they ain't really that bad. So we're going to go ahead and do 5.72 times 10 to the 8. And yet again, we're going to divide it by the square root of 2. And that's going to give you, and that's going to give me, and that's going to give everybody who knows this formula, the side. So let's do it. 5.72 times 10 to the 8. Some of these calculators, you got to use that E button. So let's put E to the 8th. We hit enter. 2. Square root it, and then hit divide. I should see about a side. Remember, the side's always smaller than the diagonal. Side's always smaller. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. So I see roughly around, estimated, 4.04 times 10 to the 8th. But now we got to do that area, and we got to keep writing it down so you keep memorizing it. The area formula is the side to the second power. So we're going to go ahead and hit squared. And now we got our answer. 1.64 times 10 to the 17. Now, I don't want to write this in standard form. So if you want to write this, oh, man, I don't know. You could put 164 with 15 zeros. But it's just easier to write scientific notation. In this case, way too many zeros. But you can, but I would recommend against it, all right? So let's go ahead and hit our next problem right here. Oh, Mr. Delgado, I thought this was all about squares. You trying to trick us right here? <laughs> now, I'm not really trying to trick you here. I want to show you a little bit different stuff. As you can see, I'm highlighting key words right here. This is a key word. That's a real keyword. That's a good keyword right here. Now look, in this problem here, we got an isosceles right triangle. What does isosceles mean? That means two sides are congruent, all right? And this is the beautiful thing about an isosceles right triangle, is that in this problem here, the sides that are congruent are this one and this one. But I also, oh, but this one, look, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I'm going to really try to draw this correctly here. But really, an isosceles right triangle, as you could see, if I were to double it and put another right triangle, that's exactly the same on top of it. I tried my best, all right? So don't be laughing at me. I know you laughing. It's a little sloppy little square right there. But guess what? I just said it. You put two of those triangles together, we got ourselves a a square all right so isosceles right triangle is just basically half a square it's like they cut it in half from corner to corner that's what an isosceles right triangle is all right so you gotta remember that you gotta remember that so essentially i mean we see those triangles in every other problem we did i mean you can see it right here there's those two triangles you got this one right here and we got this one right here those triangles have been existing in all these squares but now an isosceles triangle uh, Sosceles right triangle is essentially the same. Excuse me, same thing. All right, same thing. So in this problem here, we're going to still need to get the diagonal. And we're going to still need to divide it by the square root of 2. And that's going to give us the isosceles right triangle sides. Or really, in this problem, we call it technically the legs. So let's go ahead and figure it out. We're going to go ahead and put... 2, 5, 9, 2, 0, divided by the square root of 2. So let's hit it out the park. So we got 2, 5, 9, 2, 0, we hit enter. 2 square root, we hit divide. And we have roughly 1.83 times 10 to the 4th. All right, that's what I see. 
Now, that doesn't mean we're done yet, all right? We ain't done yet. But we got a lot of what we're doing. I hope you could see that in this problem, we're not going to multiply by 4. We got ourselves, let me go ahead and bust out my blue highlighter right here. We got ourselves this little side right there. We got ourselves this side. You guys see it right there? That side, which is 1.83 times 10 to the 4th. We got ourselves this side right there, which is also, I'll write it down, 1.83 times 10 to the 4th. So really, we could get that answer that's on our calculator, the one I see right there in my calculator, and you see it hopefully too. We're going to just hit 2 multiply, because we got two of those sides that are the same. But then we got one more step. We got ourselves that other side, that hypotenuse. Remember, that hypotenuse is the side opposite that right angle, and we don't know what that is. We need to figure out how to... Oh, wait a second. It's right there. We got 25, 9, 2, 0. We hit plus. We add them together. Remember, perimeters add all sides. And now we got our answer. Remember, perimeter is what? Add all sides. Mr. Delgado, but there's four sides. Hey, remember, these sides really don't exist here. That one and that one, they're not really there. I'm just showing you that isosceles right triangle is half of a square. They're not there. The sides are right there. So in this problem, we got ourselves a good answer of six. Oh, well, let me write it down. Let me go ahead and write this bad boy down. 6.26 times 10 to the fourth. Or if you want to write it in standard form, which is A-OK -okay by me, 626, 4 minus 2, we got 4, let me use the other, remember, just so you can see, we got 4 right here, we got 2 spaces after the decimal, so 4 minus 2 is 2, which means we wrote two zeros at the end. I mean, that's just really how you do it, that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen, the two zeros at the end, and we call it a day, yeah, that's right, buddy. All right, next problem. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Remember, you see an isosceles right triangle. Don't freak out. Don't freak out on me. Don't freak out. Hey, remember how I told you that we got sides? But now since it's a right triangle, they're not called sides anymore. They're called the patitas. I mean the legs. Yeah, buddy. So we got ourselves a leg, but it's essentially the same thing. As this side right there. Hey, we got some color theory. We got that blue. We got that yellow mixed up. Look at that side. Now it looks like a green color right there. I like it. Well, in any case, let's go ahead and do this problem. We got our leg. We got the side. So we got to get our side. And we haven't used this one since the first problem here. We can get our side. And we're going to multiply it by the square root of 2. And that gives us our diagonal. When we got the side... We multiply. When we got the diagonal, we gonna divide. Diagonal divide, side multiply. That's a good way to remember it, okay? So, hey, that's how we do it. So, let's go ahead and get it popping here, okay? We got 7, 6, 2, 5, 1. And we're gonna multiply by the square root of 2. Square root of 2. So, let's do it. 7, 6, 2, 5, 1. Enter. 2 square root. Multiply, multiply, and I see right now roughly 1.08 times 10 to the fifth. Now you may think you're done, but we ain't done because what we're looking for is the perimeter. And that means we gotta add all sides. We got the hypotenuse right there. We got that hypotenuse right there. I see it right there in my calculator. But what we got to do is we got to add our legs. So we're going to get 7, 6, 2, 5, 1, hit plus. 7, 6, 2, 5, 1, hit plus again. And now we got our three sides here. We got our beautiful answer. And we ready to get it going. 2.60 times 10 to the fifth. Or 260 zero. Zero, zero, zero. Notice how we added three extra zeros at the end of this number. Five minus two makes three. Easy as that, all right? Let's keep it going. All right, we got ourselves an isosceles right triangle. So to do this formula, to do formulas of a triangle, 
we basically do, let me write it over here, I'm going to write it on the side, write it on the side over here, the area of a right triangle, let me go ahead and put area, I'm going to write the equals over that little bar right there, because on that border right there, and we put base times height divided by 2. But the beautiful thing about this problem is that it's isosceles. It's a square. And you know what? We could even see that one isosceles right triangle times two makes the square. So that's why our triangle formula, base times height divided by two, it kind of comes from something like that. So this particular is a special problem. It's a special problem. We could get our area and we could make it equal to side squared divided by two that's what we could do but notice they gave us the diagonal we gotta do something in this problem we gotta find the side so let's do it ladies and gentlemen we're gonna do our diagonal right that's how we roll that's how we get it and we're gonna divide by the square root of two and that's gonna make a side so i'm gonna put my diagonal i'm gonna put it in here 0 0.00451 and we're gonna divide it by the square root of 2 and that's gonna give us our size so let's see what we get all right 0 0.00451 enter 2 square root divide and I see and hopefully you see 3.19 times 10 to the third that's what i see oh wait i would have gotten this big time wrong that's not a third power i hope hey i heard you okay i'm sorry i wrote it wrong i heard you it's negative three but make sure it does look like a negative because mr delgado here you're gonna end up getting us in trouble it doesn't look like there's a negative there let me write it a little bit more to the side a little bit more but there you go that's a negative three you gotta make sure you write it correctly legibility matters okay Oh, it sure does. So in this problem, let's go ahead and get it right here. So we're going to go ahead and get that side. Remember, we're going to get this side. It should still be in your calculator. And what do we got to do to it? We're going to go ahead and square it. So you're going to hit x squared or 2y to the x. Both work. Okay? So I see 1.02 times 10 to the negative fifth. But we got one more step to divide. <laughs> ah, and we got ourselves a good old answer. 5.09 times 10 to the negative 6 power. Easy work. Now look, I wouldn't change it to standard form. I wouldn't. But I'll go ahead and tell you. I'll tell you how to do it. Remember how we were subtracting 2 from that number? Because we have two numbers behind the decimal. In this case, since it's a negative exponent, instead of moving to the back, moving that decimal place, making our number larger... We're going to make this 5.09 a lot more tiny, a little teeny tiny. So that means we're moving to the front. We're moving our decimal to the front. We're going to the left. But notice how there's only one number. There's only one number to the left of the decimal. In this problem, we're going to get that 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. And we're going to take away only one from it. So that means... That we're going to put our decimal and put one, two, three, four, five zeros. And then the five, zero, nine. We got to put all that stuff right behind those five zeros we put for that place value. And to be honest, I personally think scientific notation is a little bit faster. But it's really up to you. All right? So we got to do what's comfortable. But I did want to show you it just in case you wanted to learn about it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? All right, so now in this problem, ooh, we got a good problem here. We got our area of a square. So area of a square, remember, it's going to be side to the second power. But this one's a little different right here, ladies and gentlemen, because we want the side. We don't want that area. So what we got to do to get that side isolated, to get it by itself, we're going to have to square root the side and that's going to cancel out this and the square root. They cancel each other out. They're opposites. It's like multiplying and dividing. It's like adding and subtracting. They're called inverses of each other, okay? But whatever we do on one side, you got to do on the other side. So we put that square root on the right. We canceled out that square. 
but we gotta put that square root on the left. So our new formula is the square root of area gives us that side. That's right. That's right. So let's go ahead and do it. We're going to get that side. We're going to get 3.59. We're going to go ahead and hit times 10. E button usually works, but it depends on your calculator, right? And then we're going to go ahead and put to the fifth power, all right? Now we're going to immediately hit square root. And what you should have gotten is what I should have gotten, the 5.99 times 10 to the second. That's our side right now. But we think that's the answer. But you got to always read carefully. We're not looking for the side in this problem. We're looking for that diagonal. So we're going to get that side. And we're going to do what? Multiply. That's what we're going to do. We're multiplying by the square root of 2. And that equals to the diagonal, you ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and do it. We're going to go ahead and put 5.99. Now, really, we're not going to put it. It should already be in our calculator, okay? Times 10 to the second. We don't write this stuff down. Because, honestly, if you hit yellow show, it's not 5.99 perfectly. I see 5.991660871, and it keeps going. So you don't think it's not 5.99. There's more numbers after. That's why you should leave it in your calculator. We're not done yet. And immediately when we have that there, we're going to hit multiply by the square root of 2. Of course, the correct way we put it in our calculator, okay? So then we're going to hit 2, we're going to hit square root, and we're going to hit multiply. And our diagonal is always bigger than our side, and I see a bigger diagonal. We got 8.47 times 10 to the second, or 847. Easy work, ladies and gentlemen. Easy work, all right? So let's go ahead and keep it going, okay? We got our perimeter in this problem. Remember perimeter? Remember the perimeter was equal to 4 times the side. Remember, numbers touching parentheses means multiply, all right? So we're going to have to basically undo this. What do you mean undo this, Mr. Dugat? We're going to work backwards, all right? So we're going to divide the right side by 4. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do the other side. You know what I'm saying? So we can get the perimeter and divide it by 4. Guess what happens to the 4s on the right? We cancel each other out. And now we got our hybrid formula right here. That perimeter over 4 equals the side. And once we get that side, you already know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get that side and multiply by the square root of 2. And that gives us the diagonal, okay? So what we got to do here first, what we do here first is we're going to get 6.27 times 10 to the 7. We're going to go ahead and divide that by 4. And then once we do that, we're going to put this answer right here. We're going to put that beautiful thing in that formula right there. All right? So let's walk us through this. All right, Mr. 500, let's do it together. Yeah. So we're going to put 6.27 times 10 to the 7th power. We hit enter. We're going to hit 4. Divide. All right. I got 1.57 times 10 to the 7th. Okay. So hopefully that's what you got so far. Yet again, I keep writing it down just so you can follow along. But that doesn't mean you should write it down. It should still be looking at us right there in our calculator screens. Right after we do that. We're going to hit 2 square root. You got the sign. You multiply. And that changes it to that diagonal right there. And now we good to go. Remember, the diagonal is always bigger than the side. So reasonableness tells us that this is a good answer. We got 2.22 times 10 to the 7. I wouldn't even do standard notation. But if you want, you put 222 two, two and 5 zeros at the end. Let's keep it going. All right, this bad boy. There's no diagonal drawn for us, but we could go ahead and draw it right there. I mean, it's not perfect, but you get the point. And now we looking for that diagonal. So we're going to go ahead and do it again. We're going to get the perimeter equals to 4 times the side here, right? 4 times the side. So how do we undo it? Well, we're going to go ahead and get the side side. The side with the side. <laughs> you like the side with the side. 
<laughs> you missed the guy, you crazy. And we're gonna go in and divide it by four. Whatever we do on the right side with the side, we gotta do on the left side. Guess what happens to our fours? They cancel each other out. They're out of here. They gone. They gone. We don't wanna see it no more. But now we got our good formula here, and we got our perimeter over four equals to the side. And what do we do after that? Well, now we're gonna put that inside this formula. Side times the square root of two equals to the diagonal. So once we get that side answer from the perimeter, we're gonna go ahead and go straight to the other formula and plug it in right there, all right? So we're gonna do that perimeter. 72, 72, that's a good one right there. Ooh, that reminds me of what? 909 times eight, I like that one. Yeah, all right, that's just uh, you know me being a little. So, okay, well, 909 times eight, 72, 72. All right, so we get 72, 72 divided by four, all right? So we hit four divide. What we should see for our side is about 1.82 times 10 to the third. Now, what do we do next? We're gonna go ahead and multiply by the square root of two. So now I got my answer, and it's reasonable. It's gotta be bigger than the side. You gotta remember that. The diagonal's always bigger. That's how you know it's multiplied, because you're gonna make a bigger number. 2.57 times 10 to the third, or 2,570. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next problem here. We got ourselves the perimeter, so we're basically gonna get our perimeter divided by four, make the side. And after we make the side, we get the side and multiply by two, and we get our diagonal. So let's go ahead and get it popping. We're gonna really go ahead and do eight, two, two, three, divided by four. And you know what, I'm just gonna combine these formulas now. I mean, I don't know, Mr. Delgado, why haven't you done this earlier? Well, you know why I'm doing it right now, all right? So we're gonna get that, which is now the side, and then we're just gonna hit multiply by the square root of two. And that's both formulas put together. Instead of having two formulas being worked out, we're gonna put them together, and as you can see, we got that one formula. So we're gonna do eight, two, two, three, and four, divide, two, square root, hit multiply, and we got ourselves 2.91 times 10 to the third. Or some of you wanna write it like I wanna write it, 2,910. Yeah, buddy, let's get it. Last one here, last one of the day, and you know what? If you kept with me this whole time, now you can know how to work with the square root of two and diagonals because that's what we got to do here, all right, ladies and gentlemen? Easy problems, hard work always pays off. We're going to get that perimeter, and we're going to divide by the four to get our side. Yet again, we're going to get that side and multiply square root of two, and we get that diagonal. And now we got it. We ready to go. We ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and do, man, that's a crazy number. How many zeros is it? We got one, two, three, four after the decimal. So decimal, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, divided by four. That's how we started, all right? Point zero, 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 three, four, five, and four, divide. And what we should see for the side is 8.63 times 10, to the negative six power, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what do we do next? We're gonna go ahead and hit two, square root, multiply, and now we got our answer. 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, math's easy, but you gotta practice, just like anything else. You wanna get big muscles, you work out, and we gotta get that big man muscle so we gonna work out that mind, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what, you work hard, you're gonna be one of the strongest in minds this world's ever seen. And that's why you gotta keep working out with Mr. 500. So hopefully, you got the diagonals of the squares, you know how to work with perimeter and area, and I got one thing to say to you. Have a good one till next time. Peace out.